Hello and welcome. My name is Fake Fairy Tale, and these are 15 tips to improve your map making skills in Dungeon Draft. You can rapid click on your map to make sure that you have a natural blend between textures. So instead of keeping down or pressing down your mouse button, rapid clicking will get you a much more natural looking map with textures blending in together very nicely. Don't be afraid to use a lot of different textures in your map and use all the slots that are available to you. Having a lot of different textures will make it much easier to blend things together and bring a lot of variety to your map. Having more means you can do more, so don't be afraid to use them all. Don't use the built-in shadow tool that come with walls or objects, but preferably use the pathing tool to make your own shadows. They look much more natural and they give you a lot more flexibility when placing down shadows for walls or objects than the original built-in shadow function would. You can use pillars placed on layer 700 to hide away awkward corners on your map. It also looks so much better to just have a pillar at an intersection where walls otherwise would overlap or go underneath each other. You can use the shadows in a pattern shape tool to darken out different tiles on a stone floor. It makes it look like they're either discolored or sunken a bit further into the ground, giving some variety to your stone flooring. Don't be afraid to put the furniture in your house at a slight angle. If you put everything straight to the table, for example with chairs, it looks like nobody's living there or somebody is very neat. If you put things at a slight angle, like over here, it looks like somebody is using it all the time or bumping into the pieces of furniture, which looks much more natural. Don't be afraid to use different kinds of colors and furniture in your map. Having some variety in your furniture makes every room much more interesting to look at and in the end it will look better than if you have one same style of furniture or same color throughout the whole building. You can use the alpha value in your custom colors to make objects translucent. This works incredibly well for objects made of glass, but can also function for a lot of different tools. For example, using blood stains to make moss or dirt stains on the floor. Life is messy, so don't be afraid to put down a lot of clutter in your maps. Eventually, it does come down to personal preference as to how far you want to go, but Life is really messy and people use things and displace things all the time. So if you want to make your map feel really alive, a lot of clutter will really help getting the point across. You can use the asset pattern set to some translucency with the alpha value to make, for example, soup in a pot. Use the shadow pathing tool to draw some shadows around all objects, even if you do not regard the light or light sources around it. It will help pull away the objects from the floor or from each other or from the walls that are surrounding it. And it makes it all look that much more realistic already. It's not the perfect way of doing things, but if you're having a very hard time placing down shadows according to light, then this can already help create some depth in your map and it will look much better than not using any shadows at all. If you really want to bring your map to the next level, make sure that you use highlights and shadows to highlight objects or cast shadows according to light sources in your map. When you do this, you make sure that everything looks as if it's an integral part of the map and that the light interacts with every object that is around it. You can use layers and colors to create some depth to your bushes and trees and make it look like they interact with the light sources outside. When you make the bottom layer the darkest, the middle layer a bit lighter and a bit smaller, and then the top layer the lightest and the smallest, you can create the illusion that there's light being cast on top of the bush without even applying any shadow to it. It will already look much better than when the bush has the entirely same color. You can make it look like that objects are inside crates by placing planks on top of the crate and on a higher layer than the objects themselves. 
This way, instead of overlapping with the grade, they'll be underneath. And afterwards, when you place down some shadow, it will already look much better than having them overlap with the grade. You can copy the hex codes of your colors into an Excel file. This way, you can ensure consistency of color throughout your maps. And if you ever need to reference one of them again, you can just copy and paste them from this file straight into Dungeon Draft. Well, folks, that was it for now. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like, favorite and subscribe button uh, to stay up to date on all my content. It will also help me get my video out there. If there's any other topic you'd like to see me address in future videos, feel free to share them in the comments. And I hope to see you again in the next video.